In this video, I'll be showing you some useful commands for preparing the variables that you will be using in your analysis. Now assume that you have imported your data, you've opened your data file, and you've merged your data set with another data set, if that is what you want to do. Now it's time to start preparing the variables for analysis. So the first thing I would like to do is rename my variables. You want to pick names that are easy to understand, but yet short and easy to overview. So let's create a heading here, renaming and labeling, because we want to label them as well, perhaps. So the command to rename a variable is rename. And then you pick the variable, for instance, this one, total shares outstanding. That's a horrible long name. We don't want to have that there. We want to maybe call it NOSH, number of shares. Okay, so first I want to go ahead and run my code. I import all my data and that worked. And now I rename the variable and there it went. But there it goes, um, the new name. If I want to rename multiple variables at a time, I can do that as well. So if I type rename and within parentheses, I put all the variable names that I want to rename. I don't have to actually type them in. What I can do is I can go here and I can select the ones I want to rename like that. And then they appear in my command window. I can copy them. I can go back to my to file and I can paste them there. Okay, now I want to tell Stata which name I want to give to which variable. So now I put the new names in the same order as I have my variables. So equity, uh, ISAN, equity, net income, total assets, and industry. I think those are standard names. And normally you find names that you like and you stick to those in multiple projects. So now we can run that line of code as well. And there we go. Now, the next thing we want to do perhaps is to label the variables because the names sometimes are not so informative. So to do that, I put label variable, label var, and the variable I want to label. And I write, for instance, ISAN, and that is the International Securities Identification Number. Maybe I want to label some of the others as well. So net income, I want to write net income. And I can rename total asset or label TA total assets and label var book value of equity. And finally, I'll label my NOSH variable total shares. Maybe total number of shares. Select the code and I execute. And you see now here, I get my nice new labels. They're much more informative. Next, we want to make sure the variables are in the right format. We do this by inspecting our variables. And there are mainly two types of variables, string variables and float variables. So let's go to our data editor. String variables are recognizable in that they contain text. Float variables are those that contain numbers. So there are other variable types that are similar to float but vary in their precision. Um, that is how much data they contain. But for all practical purposes, we can stick to talking about float variables. And we want the numerical variables to be of this kind. However, sometimes a variable will be interpreted as a string variable by Stata, even when it contains numbers. And this happens whenever there is any text anywhere in the data set for that variable. That is, if only one observation for that variable contains text, the variable is treated as a string. You can tell that this is the case if the variable is red. You see here that return, for instance, is red. And the reason it got red, it turned red, is because there is text here. And this is actually just missing data, but it thinks that it's, this is important data. So this is an actual value that we care about. 
Now the identifier um, variables are also read um, here, you see IQID and the ISIN, because they are string variables and they should be string variables. But we need to do something about the return variable, however, otherwise we can't use it in the analysis. So in order to destring a variable, let's go back to our do file. We type destring, and then the variable that we want to destring. And we add replace as an option. And this, what this does is that it replaces the current string variable with the float variable. You can also specify a generate option if you want to create a new variable, but this is typically unnecessary. Now, before you run the code, if a variable has been accidentally treated as text when it is numerical, as in this case, Stata will protest and give an error when you try destringing the variable. Because there is text in there, the NA, remember? And destringing will remove the text. Because you want Stata to remove the text, you have to force it to do so. So we add a force option. And then it tells uh, us that it went well because there's no red text, it's all green, but it contained non-numeric characters. And so those generated missing values. So if we now go to our data set, you see now they're just missing. Now they turned into dots. But there's no more red, so that means all numbers and we're all good. Now, because there's quite a lot of data here, it didn't actually treat it as float, it treated it as double, but like I said, for all practical purposes, it doesn't really matter. Now this is float, Nosh is float. It had less information in it, but the return turned into a double. Now some variables are strings and <clears throat> should be strings, but we might still want to be able to use them in various tests as categories. So for instance, industry here. It is a string variable and that's reasonable because it's text-based, but in order to assign a text-based variable different categories based on the value uh, or values it takes, one can encode the variable. So country and industry are commonly encoded and treated as categories. So how we do that is we go back to our do file and we type encode, oh, encode industry. And then we have to generate a new variable we might call that end. And you can see in some of the other videos how we use the encoded variables in the analysis. So run that and that worked. And then what happens is that it creates a new variable here that's blue instead of red. It still keeps the text, but if you click on it, there's actually a value in each cell. Each value represents a category. So this is category number 68. This is arbitrary. If we click here, we don't have a category value. We just have the text. So that's the difference. Perhaps the most important command you will ever come across is the generate command. And that's shortened gen. We use this to generate new variables. For example, we might want to generate a variable called LNTA, which is a natural logarithm of total assets. So LN logarithmizes, and then we tell it which variable we want to logarithmize. And equals is always used when we generate a new variable. So this is the name of the new variable, and it's equal to the LN natural logarithm of the total asset variable. So that's one way to transform a variable. And very commonly, the total assets need to be transformed because they're not normally distributed and such. So check out a video on how to um, carry out the invariant analysis. You want to know more about that. We can also generate variables by, for instance, using ratios. So if we want to create a variable called book value of equity, for share, we take the equity and divide it by the number of shares. So we can do the same for earnings per share. So we take the net income, which is the total net income, and divide it by number of shares. So that's one way to generate 
operations. It's also possible to use the generate command to create dummy variables, a value, a variable that takes the value of zero or one only. And we can create that dummy variable based on a different variable. So for instance, if we type generate dummy D, I write D for dummy, loss is equal to zero, then we create an empty variable. So let's just create all these variables first. So we created these variables. You see here, and they appeared here. Now we created a variable that's dummy and it only takes the value of zero for every observation. Now that's not very meaningful, but then we can use the replace command to replace the values in this variable and make them equal to, make the value equal to one if net income is less than zero. So this is generating a loss dummy. So if net income is equal to zero, then the dummy should take the value of one. I can run that code and inspect it. And we see here now that we have ones, we have negative net income, and zero otherwise, right? We might also want to make this dummy equal to missing if net income is missing. So now we can make this dummy equal to missing if net income is missing. So that's how we type that. We run that code, we check the data editor. And now we'll see that now it'll be missing instead when EPS is missing or when net income is missing. All right. Finally, let's have a look at extreme observations or outliers and introduce you to a command that is commonly used in the accounting literature to account for outliers, and that is the Windsor command. Now, Windsorization takes extreme values and replaces them with neighboring values. Windsorization at the 1% and 99% level takes the lowest 1% of observations and the highest 1% of observations and replaces them with the observations that are closest. So if we just uh, first show a histogram of EPS, we do that using this command histogram. Then we see that the variable is distributed like this. Most EPS is around zero, but then we have some extreme observations where EPS is actually greater than 10,000 all the way up to, I don't know, maybe it's touching upon 15,000 there. So we have some extreme observations and that we want to do something about. So by running Windsor on the EPS variable and generating a new variable that's the Windsorized version and then adding percentile zero uh, or one percent, 0 0.01, we Windsorize the extreme values. So we run that and if we then do histogram on this new variable, we see that it's much more reasonably distributed. Now it goes from minus 40 to 40 instead of 15,000. If I want to use my Windsorized variable instead of the original variable and I don't want to change my code, if I've used EPS all the time, what I can simply do is I drop the EPS, the original EPS, and then I generate, or then I rename the Windsorized EPS variable EPS. So I drop the original one in order to rename the new one EPS. So now I dropped it and it renamed that one. So now if I look at the histogram of EPS, that's actually my Windsorized variable now. Now it looks like that. If 
you have not installed some of these commands before, most of these are actually already in your Stata package, but WinSer is a user-created program, so then it needs to be installed. So the first time you want to run SSC, SSC, install, and then the program you want to install and replace in case you already have installed it, then it's going to run it anyway. So in my case, I already have it, and I don't want an error, so I run replace. And then it's going to look and check whether it's already installed, and it actually tells me it's already in my system and, and, and everything is up to date, so it doesn't do anything. If I hadn't had it, it would have installed it. 